Hi, my name is Glenn Hasselman. I'm just making this video for the free accounting software users to show you guys how to finalize your payroll in free accounting software. So um, I've processed uh, quite a few payrolls in the June 2022 month. Um, and I'm going to finalize the June tw or the 2022 financial year. So, um, you know, you might have started partway through the years and started business or you might have started using Grass 3 desktop partway through the year um, or you might have the all the transactions back to 1 July 2021 there okay um, other thing to note here is that I've processed a lot of payrolls into the next financial year and that's perfectly fine you can you don't have to finalize the prior financial year before you start processing your next financial year's payrolls um, Another thing I want to point out here is this pay run here on the which is paid on the 5th of July. Um, the worked period extends back into the prior financial year. However, um, because this is paid on the 5th of July, that makes it 100% a next financial year. So 2023 financial year payroll. Okay, so... Um, there's no portion of this pay that is in the prior financial or prior financial year for the purpose of those year to date payroll figures. And this is not uh, something new. Uh, this is the way it's just always been. Um, so sometimes I have people who have a payroll dated, you know, early in July um, and they actually, they might actually have this whole worked period in the prior financial year um, but if it's paid in July that makes it a um, payroll related to the next financial year um, so um, that's not included okay now just going to show you the quick and easy way to finalize um, based on this um, pay run here now, um, this payroll is dated 28th of June, so um, it's not the 30th of June, and this is the, uh, well, not necessarily, but, you know, this is the last payroll in the prior, or in, in the, the last payroll in the financial year. So it's dated, uh, in this case, it's dated 28th of June, and that's fine. So when you're doing it, you know, payroll, you know, let's say you know it's the last payroll for the financial year, um, you can finalize it on that payroll. So just go to one of the pay slips and you can see that the employee is being paid their normal payroll here. Um, if we go down to the pay event info, um, this is the information that gets sent to the ATO. there is this final pay for the financial year here. Now that is currently set to no, which is the default. Um, to finalize this, we can set it to yes. Okay, now because this is the final pay for the financial year, we really need to make sure these year-to-date amounts are correct. So they being, well, it says year-to-date, but because it's the final pay, that's the full year amount. That's what the employee will be using to do their tax return. Now, when I do these videos, I'm always saying to check these year-to-date amounts. Sometimes I see people coming with queries and they've got really obvious things wrong with the year-to-date amounts. So I can tell that they're not actually looking at them. But um, you, you need to check this on every single payroll. On the final one, it's even more important. So um, I'm going to uh show you or give you a couple tips on how to make sure these year to date amounts are correct <clears throat> now um but okay so just to uh sort of complete this discussion on the easy way to finalize you would set that to yes and then um you would just save that now you can go and lodge that in the normal way okay so you, you go back to your transactions. In fact, actually, before I show you 
that. Um, I want to show you this. I do these videos on a sort of shrunken down screen so they'll fit on my website nicely. Uh, there is this column here, final pay. Now that's set to true. It is easy to accidentally miss one. Okay. Um, so just scan that column and make sure you've set them all to final. Okay. So going into this other page, so I'm going to set that also to final and then go back to the transactions. Okay. Having set them to final, um, another thing to point out here is that you might have employees who work through the financial year at some point, but are not on this payroll because they've left. Um, you also have to add a zero dollar pay slip for them. Okay. And I won't demo that just yet. I'm going to do another, um, I'm going to, after I, after this, I'm going to show you how to do the uh, zero dollar pay slip with an update event. But, um, you know, just keep in mind, you need to finalize all of your, um, employees so having set those financial final pays to true you can go to the um, stp lodge page and um, go and do the lodge in the normal way by you know ticking the declaration box and so on and and clicking lodge now i won't do that here i've um i've actually been mucking around with this data so anyway um having um sort of explained the easy way to finalize um your pay for the financial year um i want to e explain so um let's say you didn't finalize it on that last pay and the reason might be because you hadn't reconciled your bank account yet um, and you wanted to do a few more checks to make 100% sure that those year-to-date amounts were correct. So you didn't finalize it on that last pay, um, then you need to finalize it. So you create, you need to do what they call an update event. So you create a new batch, and I'm just going to call this finalize to a to two financial year now all these dates you should set them to the last day of the financial year so when you are doing and what they call an update event um, it's just an update as at a point in time of what the correct values are so it makes sense to give them the update on the last day of the financial year because that's just saying that there's no further payments in that financial year. In this case, our last payroll was on the 28th of June. So if you finalize them all with something dated 28th of June, that will work. Um, but I'm just going to say this is the preferred way where you put the last day of the financial year. Okay, we save that batch and then we click um, we'll go and add a payslip. So we go uh, new payslip. So we actually have to add a zero dollar payslip for every employee. Now the software puts a blank line here by default. In some cases or some updates to the software, I've had it not put that blank line and you just have to click add line to add the blank line um, when which you normally needed it. I think I've now changed it so it's adding that line by default. So if you've got that line appearing there, because this is a zero dollar payslip, we actually need to delete that line. So you just tick this box and click delete selected lines. Okay, so this is a completely blank zero dollar payslip. The superannuation says zero as well. So let's scroll down to the pay event info. And as I've said so many times, this is what goes to the ATO. It's all there. There's nothing else that goes to the ATO. And all of this information does go to the ATO. So it's quite um, um, a good thing to review. Um, now, you want to check these year-to-date amounts. Make sure they're correct. Um, 
and then um, uh, final paper financial year, you set it to yes, and then save. Now I want to show you a bit of a check to do to make sure that your uh, year to date amounts, which are now the full year amounts, are correct. And this is something you should do even if you are finalizing it on the last pay of the financial year rather than doing this update event. If we go to the transactions page, you can see we've only got uh, one employee there. Um, now, I did have another employee, and so I'm going to show you how it, how you'd pick up that you'd missed one, right? So, um, if we look at the totals, it says year-to-date totals gross 5700 and it's got some tax there as well. Now, what we want to do is just compare these totals to the totals of the uh, payroll report in the software. So going back to the um, business and clicking on payroll summary report, it's defaulted to the 2022 financial year. We can see that normal time is a lot more than 5,700. So we've missed something here. Also the tax, okay? So at the very least, you want to check that these numbers align to what's on, your, on the pay slips. So going into normal time, now I have done a zero dollar pay slip for this employee here, an employee, and there is one other employee called another employee. So we have to uh, pick up this another employee and finalize their pay as well. So when we do that, we should see that the total of the year to date on the transit on the on the pay run or batch is 10,260 so let's go and do that now this is our batch here add a new pay slip for this employee called another employee again delete the blank line scroll down check that the year to dates are correct and flag it as final okay now if we go to the transactions page we can see that the gross is 10,260 I can't remember what the tax was on the payroll summary report but that should be checked as well so um, those figures tie up and then we can go and lodge this now all right so we're on the stp lodge page um, if i scroll down um, i've sort of accidentally got my tax agent um, details in there so i won't actually be able to lodge this um, but you know i've done videos on how to lodge uh, previously one thing i just want to point out is that when you do this zero dollar pay slip batch um, the lodge button is grayed out okay um, it's called an update event so that's disabled and we've got this update button here now the update button just does the same thing it sends it to the ATO <clears throat> and it goes through the same lodgement process okay um, one other thing I want to mention about an update event is you can't amend it, okay? So um, you don't need to amend it, actually. You, you just, if there's something wrong with it, you need to do a second update event. So this button here to amend will, even after you've done the update and send that to the ATO, that will not be enabled. Um, so I'm going to do another couple videos on this year-end finalization and one will be to show you how to handle the situation where you did the finalization and it was wrong and you want to redo that 